Hello. This week, uh, Amy and I are getting ready to talk about uh, fresh revelation in our scars. So Amy is going to pop on here in just a minute. Hopefully, we'll get her up here. I hope nobody's disappointed with the uh, rearranging of the room here because um, we have ended up moving our room around so there's no picture on the wall talking all right hey brad good to see you hi grace hello hello so hey brad hey kimmy hi kim so we wanted to first thank everyone for joining us each week it's really fun getting on here so now it's starting to feel like there's too much time in between it's like was that really just a week ago? It seems like it was two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. You were up <clears> at 2.37 <throat> this morning. Wow. Oh, my God. oh, Brad, Saturday, I slept until 11.15 in the morning. <laughs> I needed sleep. I know you, you'll probably uh, think I'm crazy, but I have worked enough to sleep, I think, three days. So, hey, Daryl, how are you? That's my buddy from down in... Um, Elkton, near Elkton, um, Timberville, Timberville, Virginia. Um, hey, John. So, oh, hey, Tom. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Brad, uh, yeah, I had to get some sleep. So this week, we were kind of just chatting. We haven't really talked very much at all. Um, so this is kind of just, uh, we just felt <laughs> it on our heart to talk about some things. And Amy had brought up, you know, when we suffer different traumas or we go through certain things in our lives and we still, you know, we're, we have the wounds from it. And then even much later, we can still have the scars. And um, Amy had brought up a, a good point about getting fresh revelation um, in those scars. And I'm going to let her touch on that here for a minute. <clears throat> yeah, it, um, <laughs> I love how the Lord talks to me sometimes because um, it just kind of makes me laugh. Um, he's got my weird and quirky sense of humor or vice versa, I guess. Um, fine, yeah. so I, uh, <clears throat> hi, Destiny. So long story short, I'll try to make it short. Um, we were driving to church on Sunday and I was just, you know, putting some lotion on my hands. And as I turned my hand like this, I saw, I noticed a scar on my hand that, you know, it's definitely older and faded but I was like oh I had I forgot about that one you know I was like oh that was interesting you know I was just telling Mark I'm like I forgot about that scar and then as soon as I said I forgot about that scar um I instantly remembered oh yeah that's how I got that and I I could picture the the kitchen accident that happened <laughs> that gave me that scar and you know I remember what it was like and how long it took to heal and all this stuff and and I was just kind of like well that was kind of weird you know, that why would I be focusing on a scar on my hand, right? Um, but then, you know, the Lord just kind of said to me, like, there's no shame in any scars. You know, I didn't feel any shame about that scar. It was just one of those, yep, I'm a klutz in the kitchen. There it goes, you know. But I think it, it goes across the board. You know, I think I definitely have some scars that um, what I would say they're more shameful than, like, others, and, um, but the Lord wants us to not bear or hold on to any shame in any of our scars. And they should bring a remembrance of, um, his healing. And, um, when we have his healing and we've had that repentance and all of that, then it also brings, you know, a revelation from that. And I just really felt like, revelation of who he is in these moments as we're walking into the this you know we're like halfway through this first month and i really feel like there's just so many like awesome things going on that sometimes we kind of have to like step okay. back and breathe in and just say okay i need fresh revelation and i most definitely need a fresh wisdom um to handle all of this all of this stuff i mean it can be all really great stuff but we need to be quickened to um, ask for that wisdom, to ask for that discernment, 
and and even in those really great moments that he's bringing us to um we need to have fresh revelation of him because if we don't have fresh revelation yes. of him then we're not revealing him and i really think mm -hmm. that that's what revelation is it's it's a revealing of him at a deeper level and if if he's going to you know be using us as his mouthpiece he's going to be using us as his hands and his feet we've got to be revealing him and none of us and so that's really where kind of all of that um you know just kind of started coming uh, to me from that um <clears throat> i think that's really well funny. as you I'm just joking as you, yeah, as you had started to talk about that it just brought back to me i mean especially with what you just went through um you know the the um <laughs> Psalms 147.3, where he says he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. I mean, he never said that he would be able to prevent them all. He never said that we wouldn't have those. We would never have trouble. You know, he never said that. So we will have trouble in this world. We will be wounded. We will have scars. And so he does bind them up. He does bandage them. And, you know, at, and then I started to really think about how those scars are actually toughened skin and how they toughen us in our spiritual walk to be able to walk, um, you know, more fiercely in his word and defend ourselves and our family against, you know, any other incoming attacks in the future. And just to, to have that tougher skin to be able to, you know, be warriors through this life. So, you know, it just really had gotten me started to think about, you know, what was, one of the moments where I had that kind of fresh revelation of what he was speaking to me. And I think for me, when you were bringing it up, this is how I kind of thought of it. It was like, you know, I knew God, I heard from God, I heard his voice in certain things. Um, I heard from him different ways, but mm -hmm. never did I imagine the things that he would reveal to me of how far back he was actually thinking of me. You know, like you said, he knitted us together in our mother's womb. But, like, you don't actually think of that. Like, you don't think, oh, yeah, he knew that this moment was going to happen when you're 43 years old. And so, you know, he prepared for that all along the way. And with that, if, if I have a minute, I'll just tell a quick story about um, Marty and I. And I literally could write a book just on um, how God has mapped our lives together. But the easiest one to talk about is um, everything that transpired in the couple years before Marty and I struggled in our marriage, me with depression, then him with depression, losing my dad, financial issues, all of that stuff. Um, it kind of came down to one day where um, when Marty was delivered to his de from his depression, and I literally up until that day thought, like, this is it. We're not going to make it. We are not going to make it. And the day that I knew that we would was March 17th. Well, years before that, okay, I'm going to throw this little one in on top because I always have to rabbit trail. Years before that, five years before March 17th, uh, 2015, in 2012, a co-teacher of mine ended up um, saying to me over um, our marriage, uh, Zephaniah 317, and I don't know if any of you know that one, but the Lord, your God is with you. He power, his power gives you victory. The Lord will take delight in you. And in his love, he will give you new life. He will sing and be joyful over you. So five years later, or three years later at the time, um, when Marty and I were going through the worst thing ever on that day, 317, which is that scripture number, you know, our marriage was completely saved. He gave us victory in our marriage. And it was like, that was something I clung to during our whole time where we were really struggling. And to see that somebody spoke that to me, and it was so purposeful. There's no coincidence in that. But if you go even further back, um, and I saw a few friends of Marty's on here from his childhood. He grew up on 1717 Tarleton Way. It was the second house he was in. He was born in D.C., but then he moved into this house, 1717 Tarleton Way. My house number was 197. So the 197 was the, you know. Am I here because they just called to say that there's a two-hour delay here tomorrow? So you can hear me, right? 
Yeah, now we can. Okay. So, so anyway, so my house number is 19717. So my house number was 17. Mm -hmm. Even just the other day, I realized if you add 19 up, it comes to 17. So our house numbers were literally 1717, 17, each of us, our entire lives. So it was, it was like we knew that God put us together for a purpose. And when you really come down to it, it was the 17th year of our marriage that we were completely restored and having, you know, come back into a place that was better than we've ever could imagine. It was like walking into the promised land of our marriage. So, to that type of thing throughout everything that we went through. Um, and then looking back and seeing how far back he actually started this is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And I could, I literally could go on. Um, I think it will actually take a few chapters of my book someday to explain how, how mm -hmm. much revelation I've had of his hand through every detail of my life. Yeah. His so, fingerprints are all I'm sure over you've us. Had every... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many, so many stories, you know, and you know, like we were talking about scars, <clears throat> you know, some are scars that just happen to you because of life. Uh, you know, there's not a single person that's walking around that's scar free. And, um, you know, and some of them are just because, you know, we decided to take a swim in the pool of poor choices. You know, I, I was the king of that pool for a long time. And, uh, you know, and that it, but it's all lessons. Um, it's all lessons that, you know, the Lord tries to, you know, he doesn't try when you give him permission to he comes in and he makes you know he makes those healed and whole um you know and i was thinking about thinking about all of that you know and i always go back to psalm 139 i love that scripture um you know where he knit he knits us together in our mother's womb he kn he knew us before he you know before he even began the knitting process you know he had right. a purpose plan for us before we were even a thought and you know, and I absolutely love that. And, and when I think about where I'm at, like today, um, you know, I pray that I'm somewhere deeper and further with him tomorrow. You know, I am constantly, you know, asking him for fresh revelation and, and a deeper revealing of him to me. And, you know, I just felt very um, strongly to just say, you know, like right now he is just in a desperate pursuit of us as individuals and his church as a whole. And, you know, yeah, he's desperate, right. he's desperate for us to know him to the depths that he knows us. So if you think about the depths of his knowledge of us back before we were even a thought, and then, you know, how, how much, you know, I mean, he's continually pursuing us. So are we continually pursuing him with that same passion? And, um, you know, to intimately know him the way he knows us. And I had thought of this scripture, it came to my mind, um, Psalm, uh, not Psalm, Song of Songs, um, chapter two, verse nine, and it's out of the Passion Translation. It's just a snippet of verse nine. It says, now he comes closer, even to the places where I hide, he gazes into my soul. Um, and there's more to that verse, but those are the little words that I wanted to pull out of there. Um, because I think sometimes in the midst of our woundedness, um, we might feel a little battered up and bruised and, um, mm -hmm. and we do want to just kind of hide and he pursues you even there. And I just really felt to like encourage everyone to just, um, to seek that deeper revelation um, and allow him to reveal that deeper, um, that deeper, um, love that he has for you, um, in the midst of all of that. Sorry, I'm getting kind of tongue tied at the moment. Um, so that's really just what I just wanted to just focus on is just to encourage, um, that as we're walking through all of this, you know, beginning of the year, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit of hustle bustle, um, but there's a lot of really great, you know, prophetic promises coming. Um, but even in the midst of all the, the joy and the celebration of what may be happening, 
um, of seeing promises fulfilled, prophetic words coming, you know, like manifesting and, and that's yeah. wonderful. If we, if we don't walk into it, asking for wisdom and revelation, um, I just really feel like there could be a, a potential to mishandle, um, those gifts. Absolutely. Um, just to go back with something that you have mentioned a little bit ago when you had said, um, to me, um, that this fresh revelation of the ways that he has moved in our lives over time is really to bring about his purpose in us. And so that kind of goes mm -hmm. with what Brad had just m mentioned when he says, the scars you share become lighthouses for others who are headed to the same rocks you hit. You know, I mean, it yeah. truly, it, and that's part of our healing too, when we're able to be there for others that are going through the same thing that we've gone through. Um, and, and seeking out those individuals and being there for them, for them, it actually brings more healing to our wounds. Um, and therefore then the healing process then makes them scars, which then toughens us so that we're no longer hurting from what we were wounded by. It doesn't hurt anymore. It's actually, yeah. we're tougher in that area where we can, we can actually talk about the things that wounded us and, and not be hurt anymore from them. Yep. Yeah, and the ones that might still be, you know, tender and sore and, you know, a little hard to talk about, you know, just know that there's nothing wrong with that, that, you know, sometimes yeah. our healing is instant and, some, and sometimes it's just a process, you know, I, I, I'm still having a few that are just in process. And, you know, I used to be very uncomfortable with that because there, there tends to be like this, at least there used to be the stigma placed on things like, you can't be a broken mess. You can't be wounded. You can't, you know, talk about these things because, you know, we need to be talking about, you know, all this other great stuff. Well, we can talk about all that great stuff, but how do you get to the great stuff without dealing with the mess? You know, I mean, how do you bring glory to God? I mean, we all don't have that perfect life, you know, and, and you can't just like march through and acting like things are just perfect and la di da and you know i don't have any problems and you know i i just i really have always struggled with that because i was always the the busted up mess walking <laughs> into the church you know and it's like and nobody really wanted to talk about mm -hmm. it nobody really wanted to hear about about that journey about that that struggle they just wanted me to like raise my hands and you know sing hallelujah well you know there's a time and a place for that and um, I just feel like, you know, just like the, the rest of the world is talking about breaking down stigmas of certain things like mental health um, um, issues and, and all of that stuff. Why can't we break down the stigma of, you know, being a Christian and having wounds? And, you know, like Brad said, I mean, if we're a broken mess, but Christ is working in us and through us, then all of those cracks and crevices shine his light. You know, I wouldn't want to be a perfect vessel because where would his light go? Nowhere. Right. Just my. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm struggling. I don't know if anybody else is here, but um, you're kind of going in and out for me. And I don't know if it's because we're having a snowstorm here, if it's just my phone. Does anybody uh, else have trouble hearing? what's being said or is it just or is it just me <laughs> I would say I, I know you've kind of been coming in and out a little bit yeah so I don't I have my wi-fi on but I usually don't I don't trust it to be on with this so um you know I just was worried and I, it, it was hard to hear everything that you said but I think you know we know enough of what we what we always talk about um yeah so Sarah, are you, is everything coming clear through on that end? Oh, okay. You can hear Amy fine. Do you hear me fine, Brad? <laughs> okay. I think, you, I think you're coming in pretty clear now, Anne-Marie. Okay. But I know for a little bit, we're kind of out. Okay. I don't want to, um, I know how it's, it can be struck, like, you know, agitating <laughs> when I can't yeah. hear something <laughs> run around the house and I'm like, I can't hear, where's my good Wi-Fi? So, 
<laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, well, I think that's really um, all we really wanted to talk about today was just encouraging you to, you know, seek out that that deeper revelation as we continue to move forward. Um, I know we wanted to kind of close it up um, uh, to pray for for people. Um, I, I know several of you on here know um, Lori Suter. So I wanted to just, um, her mom's not doing real good. Um, she got really sick and then um, um, has a bacterial infection. So I want to pray for her. Um, what are your thoughts on people in ministry being open about their faults? I think that's excellent. <sighs> I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I would rather, this is just my own point of view. I would rather hear from someone who's just being real. I mean, right. talk to me about your struggles. Talk to me about, you know, where you've tripped up and, and failed and, you know, the Lord helped you get back up again. I, I don't want to you know, like hear someone, um, you know, talk to me down their nose because they've never done this or never done that. I've never, you know what I mean? Um, I think there is a, I, I mean, I think there's a fine line um, that you have to draw. And this is just that, you know, discernment, that wisdom. You don't want to be, if you're like wounded, <laughs> and it's fresh and it's raw, um, you don't want to be teaching or preaching out of that woundedness. Because a right. lot of times when we're bleeding, um, we're not going to be really, um, we're not going to be really pure in our, in our words. You know, I don't think that we're really being fully reflective of Christ because, you know, in my wounds, there was a lot of rough things that were going on in those. And I would have hated to have to go back and retract things because I spoke out of that woundedness, because I spoke out of that hurt. Um, so I think once you are healed of the hurt, then you can talk out of your healing instead of the woundedness. Does that make sense? So we can talk about our scars and, and we could talk about some wounds. Um, but I think there are just some that they need to healed first before you speak from them if that if that makes sense that's just my thoughts well and i i feel too that like in the beginning there were some people that i did talk to about pretty fresh wounds right but as time went on i realized that as sarah also said of course there's wisdom there was wisdom gained in the different people that i met over the course of time that um, helped me see different things because although people may walk through an issue in a marriage or, or the loss of someone or anything, um, it's going to be a different walk and not everyone's going to be able to, you know, recover from it the same way that we did. And we find out different ways that work for different people. And, and we can discuss all of those things, you know, from a later point where we just come in it from, from a perspective of our own. And then mm -hmm. in that panic of, I want to help people because I need to use this. We can be insisting that it needs to be helped this way when there's really several ways that um, people can look for healing and, and help in things. And just over the course of time, we find that out and can even offer more of that wisdom and knowledge of, of how other people have walked through the same situation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think, you know, with some wounds and, and the reason why I said that, you know, not, not speaking from the woundedness, but speaking from the healing is, you know, some of those wounds, um, I'm just going to base this off of because of other teachers, preachers that I've heard talking from woundedness, you know, there, you can, you can hear it just kind of dripping, with the pain you hear it dripping with um the anger and the bitterness and the unforgiveness and the judgment and and all that stuff and that's what i say you know you want to um you want to avoid so i mean if you, you've got that wisdom you've got that discernment then you're going to know you know i really shouldn't be talking about this right now because i'm not healed enough to talk about it um i mean you could still have a wound that hasn't turned into a scar and be able to talk about it once you've been able to allow the Lord to like process you through 
all that negativity that sometimes happens. So that's why I said what I said. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's not a one size fits all. Um, it's always going to come down to wisdom discernment and, um, Lord, do you really want me to talk about this? Cause I really feel like I could help people with this, but is it the right time for me to talk about it? You know, there's a lot of things that, um, right. the Lord hasn't given me to talk about yet. And I know he'll eventually give that to me, but he hasn't given me permission yet. So, you know, it's all, you know, in his timing and just seeking him and, um, and letting him take the reins as you know, I always want him to take the reins because I just don't have enough confidence in myself to trust myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I just, uh, I, that's what I encourage, you know, cause I think it is good. I think it's good to be up there and be real of, you know, life is a struggle. And so, you know, if you can get up there and encourage people, <laughs> um, like this is what I'm struggling with and, um, you know, and I want to be able to help people. I want to be able to pray for people. Um, you know, there's there's definitely some power um, in some things when you're fighting for something to go out and find other people to pray for that are f battling the same thing. So, you know, back at Christmas, um, my dad had had a really bad infection. He had a really high fever. Well, I was kind of like scared and devastated for about five minutes. And then I went onto my Facebook page and I'm like, I'm going to be praying for people to be healed. That was my, that was my call to arms <laughs> at that moment. I'm like, I'm going to go battle for my dad's healing by praying for other people's healing. And I think that's the same thing. Like if you're speaking to people, if you're up at the pulpit or whatever, you know, if you're able to, to, to put it in perspective of this is a battle that I know a lot more people have that, you know, I'm battling with, let's pray for each other. Let's lift each other up. Let's battle for this together. And, and it's a journey together. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. And um, what she said about Brad encouraged me recently to still get up and preach, even though I was walking through the deepest valley, I felt like I was disqualified but God moved more than ever before. I think anything, anytime that you're doing something, you know, in his name and you want to give him glory for it, he will absolutely move in us more than ever before. And, you know, and the timing's right. And although you might've been in the freshest part, it was probably at the same time, just like we're talking about, um, might not be the, to the point of it being a scar and in the past, but it was bringing you fresh revelation right mm -hmm. from where you were in that. So you were able to really go deep and, um, and really bring um, God's thoughts out and God's words to who you were preaching to. I just think I, I wanted to go back up. She had said, but I think it's easy for people to develop an us and them mentality when they feel like they're listening to someone who has no current struggles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, that happens a lot, um, I think. I think we even actually might have said something about that recently in one of our conversations, Amy, where it can feel like that, especially, you know, when I think I think everyone has something at any point in time. It's just, you know, what level is it? So, you know, we might be experiencing something really bad where it's going to be all over our faces, especially, you know, if you're someone that, you know, expresses everything or like us raw and real, like all the time. Um, <laughs> but when it's the smaller things or the beginning of something, it's not really talked about as much. And so I usually, um, I just assume people are going through something or have just gone through something or possibly they could be going through something. So whenever I interact or, or start to get that mentality of us and them because, oh, I've gone through all this and they haven't had to go through anything. We really don't know that. And quite often, five years goes by and you find out that they were in deeper trenches than you ever were. So, you know, I've, I've come to realize that. I don't know if it just happens in your 40s or... <laughs> Cause I'm kind of a late bloomer when it comes to a lot of this revelation stuff that, you know, my relationship with God has been there all along, but 
you know, realizing, um, having the revelations that I have now about him and about what other people are actually going through um, is all kind of brand new in the last 10 years for me. So it's been a growing process to really realize that so many people really are suffering from something and whether they make it pri um, public or knowledge or share it with, you know, confiding with a friendship, um, I give him the benefit of the doubt wherever they are because, you know, he, he didn't just say, I'm going to give some people or some people are going to experience trouble in this world, but there's going to be some people that aren't, he didn't say that. He said, we w would all experience trouble in this world. I mean, this is, you know, this world, this isn't heaven on earth yet. So, yeah, I mean, we can do our best to, you know, manifest that, but you know, everyday life, you know, it's that saying, you know, you walk a mile in someone else's shoes. And, and that's what I do, like, with my heart and my mind, whenever I interact with someone, I, I immediately listen to what they're saying. And, and I just I try to put their shoes on, because I want to understand them as a person, I want to understand them, um, their, their journey, because everybody's journey is different. And there isn't a single smooth and straight road for anybody. And, and all those, those rough places, you know, shape us and, and mold us into who we are. And, and the Lord loves to come in. And, you know, I was really, really rough around the many, many edges. And, you know, he takes all of that and he, and he puts us with people at this point and they kind of help chisel down some of that rough stuff. And then, and then, you know, with that new revelation, he moves you forward and he puts you with some different people and those, you know, do a finer tuning um, you know, and I just see that going on and on and on. And so when he, he has you walk through these journeys, he always gives you, um, the, it's kind of like a charge. He charges you now that he's walked you through this stuff or is currently walking you through this stuff to turn around and help others that are walking the same path or, or dealing with the same issue or journey or whatever you want to title it. You know, we are all put together um, to help each other. And, um, you know, and I think that all comes when you, you know, when you have that revelation of what he is able to do, what he wants to do, what he is always willing to do. Um, and you'll see that manifest, um, you know, when you turn around and, and help him, you know, I mean, become a help to someone else. And, right. um, you know, I, I'm totally, I, I'm sorry, Sarah, I don't want to pick you out on this, but. I am totally <laughs> like fiction, picturing, you know, your current journey. And I mean, I, I just really feel like you just keep going. I mean, keep sharing that because I know that you are helping so many people. Like I could stand next to you and I have not walked that journey. I can have compassion for it. I can have empathy for it. I can have you know, understanding for it, but I don't have wisdom of it because I've not walked it, but I can definitely learn from you so that, you know, I can help someone that's near me. And so I just, I really wanted to just take a moment. I, sorry to pick you out, but um, <laughs> I really just wanted to encourage you um, to do that. Cause I know that in those times, you know, you do have a lot of questioning and, and it's, you know, and it's a struggle. Um, but I, I'm just like, I feel like a big sister. Like I watch your Insta stories and I'm like, Oh, I'm just so proud of her. You know, I'm just <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I just, I, I'm just so proud of you. And, um, Oh, I get all choked up. I'm so proud of you. Not you. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so proud of you. So, you know, I want you to just keep going because, Oh my gosh, you have an amazing, um, voice and wisdom and revelation to share, not just, in this one thing, but many things. And, um, you're going to, you're going to be getting your voice back girl. <laughs> so you, you just get ready, <laughs> get ready to buckle up. <laughs> well, and as Terry said up here, um, he said, going through stuff helps us uh, to better relate with others in pain and suffering, which and then helps us to be better intercessors. I mean, that is so true. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm one that will, let, you know, in the past would say, yeah, I would pray for someone and yeah, it goes on a list and I sit there and I pray, but I've never, ever 
you know, would get into these passionate prayers over other people, um, you know, take it to the next level of interceding for them, you know, over and over again and, and going to the throne room and, and asking why this, that and everything. And now like it has brought me to a new level. So it really does bring us to a different place in our own walk and teaches us something, um, you know, with, with everything that's happened, I've just grown so, in so many things. And, and that's just, such, that's another purpose in it all. It just doesn't bring us to our purpose to, in what we're, we're to do for him. It's also, there's a purpose in us growing in him and what is available to us through him. Um, and I just thought that that was a really neat point. And we're not always, um, you know, I think back to when I met Brad Steele and I was in the courses of Nate and Christy and I was in Voyage of Awakening and I was just coming out of, you know, that really hard place. And Brad never walked the same walk as I did, but the way that he reached out to me because of whatever he's walked through, which had nothing to do with my walk, he was able to reach out and wrap his arms around me in that workshop that we were in and you know, make me feel loved and okay. And like Sarah was saying about before, like when you're in that, you feel disqualified. Well, like I can never use my life because I was in this horrible place. And w when I was loved and accepted by this group of people and Brad was the first one to speak up and, and, and really touch my heart with that, then I knew my purpose. And, um, you know, so when we start to grow in things and grow in our experiences, um, <laughs> you know, um, you know, now I can't talk because I'm reading Brad's comment. I, know. <laughs> I always wanted an older brother that was wise and <laughs> wise beyond my years. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. You, Brad. So, yeah. But I think it is neat when we can begin to start reaching out to people that we haven't even walked through their, their walk. And we understand, you know, that these things can happen to anybody. And it, and it just, it's, it does start to bring heaven to earth because we start to really grasp hold of, it's not the flesh of the person here in this world that we love. It's their spirit and who they were made to be in Christ that we're meant to love. And so we look beyond the wounded and scarred flesh here, even though that that's important while we're here, it is. But we start to begin to look inward at every person that we interact with. And then there's a different way that we begin to love. And then that way is the way that we're meant to love in Christ where we love unconditionally, we love who they are without this world around them that's causing so much of what's happening to them or that they're, you know, maybe we can look at someone, you know, millions of people could have looked at Marty and I and said, either one of us, well, you should leave her or you should leave him, you know, but we were able to look within the other person and know that that wasn't the other person you know, that was acting that way, you know, it's the enemy making us believe lies about ourselves that then cause these reactions um, to this world that then cause these behaviors. And so often that's not realized. And I think the more people start to walk and realize what everybody else is actually going through the same sort of thing, or they're going through something different, or they're that we begin to love them in that way. And then that's when more and more heaven on earth, heaven on earth. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's what we strive for every single day. Yeah. When I was going through some of the real deep healing that I needed, I, you know, once the Lord just kind of revealed my real identity, like how he saw me and, and started changing how I saw myself. Cause you know, I would see myself just in the midst of the mess, you know, and, and, and the brokenness and all that stuff. Um, once I started to see him or once I started to see myself the way he sees me, 
then I just wanted to see others that way too. And so I always have my prayer, like, you know, Lord, give me your eyes and let me, give me your ears, you know, so I can see others the way you see them, that I can hear the, what they're really saying. So they can be saying something to me, but I'm hearing the truth of what they're really saying, you know, and, and it's that whole like read between the lines kind of thing. And, you know, and it, and it also, you know, break my heart for what breaks yours. It, it's just, right. Wanting to see his creation for how he created it to be. And like Sarah said, you know, calling out the gold. And, and that's what it is. You know, it's, it's everyone has treasure within them. And sometimes they just need someone to come along and, and point that out and encourage them. And that in and of itself is just a deep revelation for them. And, and I've seen it happen a couple of times now. And it's just mm. such an awesome thing. It's like Christmas morning. You know, it's like you just talk to someone and you encourage them and, and you speak into them that life. And it's just like this wide eyed. Wow. You know, and it's just such a gift. You know, it's like, oh, I want to do that more often. Give me more people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I love that. I love seeing people have that revelation of the truth. And, um, you know, I just feel like that that's that's really what it's about, you know, that having that that continual revelation of who he is and who he's created you to be. Right. Right. Um, Terry's making a lot of good points here where he said, Jesus learned obedience in the things he suffered. It works like likewise for us. And particularly I liked what he said about, you know, gifts become more manifesting in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. When we love when we put that love towards others. And I mean, that is the truth. I mean, I see more in the spirit. Um, you know, I feel more healing power in my prayer. I feel like those things come about and then I have more peace, I have more joy, like all those different things that come when we're, when we're loving to others and we're moving in the spirit of love. I think that has to do with anything in life. I mean, you know, not everyone's going to love us, but I think, you know, when you're putting that out there the best you can, of course, mm. if Sarah wants to talk about, like, if we can walk, talk about our own <laughs> issues right now, it's really hard to do when you feel criticized, or even if you believe you're being criticized and you're not, you know, and in this world, people are so critical that it's a constant battle. It's a constant lie to tell yourself that you're not so, you know, that's something I struggle with, Sarah. <laughs> um, you know, that I think we're always, whether it's a, a deep traumatic wound or it's just something that we're struggling with, you know, like growing up, a lot of things that caused me to stumble and fall myself had to do with my insecurity. So that was something I struggled with most of my life. Um, now it's to stop assuming other people's thoughts or feelings towards me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I'm getting better at that. I've grown so much in two or three years, but it's still there. <laughs> yep. And one day it won't be. And you'll look back and you'll go, Oh, wow. I hadn't dealt with that for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always, it's always that, but it's, it's always, you know, at the end of the day, just, Give me fresh revelation, you know, fill me with what you fill me with the handle today and let's go on. <laughs> um, we have gone way over our 30 minutes. <laughs> I know. I know. We um, really did. Yeah. We were so, stopped though. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I mean, it, I definitely didn't want to just stop at where we were talking because it was just so good. And I love all the comments. Um, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I love all the conversation and I'm with you, Sarah. <laughs> you know, we could talk for hours. I think I saw <laughs> Agnes pop on there for a second. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. Um, yeah, so I think let's just go ahead and, um, wrap it up. Um, if you guys would just, um, be praying for our you friend Lori. Lori Suter, her mom, um, is ill. And so we need to be 
speaking some healing and um, all of that over her. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I don't know if there's anyone on here or on the replay that's dealing with jaw pain, but I was having like stabbing pain in my jaw and I don't have jaw issues. <laughs> So I'm assuming that that's something for someone um, that I just, I wanted to speak healing over that. I don't know if it's stress related or if it's like, you know, TMJ or whatever it is, but I just felt um, the need to just call that out and, you know, speak healing over that in Jesus name. Oh, that's you, Sarah. Ah, see, thank you, Lord. I've never had that before. So this is the first yeah, time. I, I think she's, oh, that. oh, wow. Is yeah, it? I have never had that before. So oh, thank wow. you. I was all nervous. I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll just write this at the end of the comment, you know, so I don't have to do it on, on live. But um, okay, cool. So we're gonna speak healing over Sarah's jaw, yes, that all the pain are. has to leave now in Jesus name, any stress yes. that might be causing it mm -hmm. any residual Amen. EMJ or jaw problems that has to go right now in Jesus name. Jesus name. Oh, I used to have that too, Sarah, and I ended up having to get, <laughs> I had to get like a bite guard because I was like breaking my teeth. It was bad. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to say like the stress has to go and all of the stress that you feel is going to be replaced with that peace that passes all understanding right now in Jesus name. You're going to see it come over you as you go throughout this day. You're just going to feel it. You're not going to feel stress in the places that you think you would feel stress. You're going to feel peace total restoration of your jaw and your mind and everything that's going on right now. Um, I also had one other one. This is so crazy. Um, I literally been praying for the Lord to give me words of knowledge because it's an area that I want to grow and he's just awesome. Um, so I've been praying for this for like months. And um, <laughs> so on Sunday, I'm sitting in church and I start hearing the song that Neil Diamond sings, that sweet Caroline. I'm not even going to sing it because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't see a Caroline on here. So I think maybe it's for um, a replay or maybe it's someone that um, one of you guys know. So it was the song sweet Caroline. And this is what he wanted me to share. He said, you've been bitter about your sweetness. The Lord wants you to see this gift he has given you. See the purpose for which you were created. This sweetness is me. People will taste and see that I am good through you, your words, and your actions. It's time to embrace it. So whoever that's for, I pray that you hear it. I pray that you receive it. And um, I will continue to pray. And if the Lord wants to give me some more. I will gladly share it. Oh, that's just so cool. That's just such confirmation. Thank you, Jesus. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Like, <gasps> that's really awesome. like, and I'm probably gonna start crying. So um, that is all I had. And you know, if you guys have any other um, things that you know, we can be praying for you guys for over the week, um, you know, put it in the comments. Or, you know, if you don't want to put it in the comments, you can um, private message um, Anne Marie and I. And yeah. um, we'll be praying for you guys as we go throughout the rest of this week. Um, and uh, we will chat with you guys next Tuesday night. Yes. Thanks for coming on. We love you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. It means the world to us. He gave me a word for you <laughs> back in the picture frame. I moved oh. my, my love seat <laughs> to the corner. I'm, I'm a Band. custom picture frame now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that, Janet. We do. We do carry his fragrance everywhere we go and every word we speak. Uh, love that. Okay. We really should wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting love here trying that. to pull up. Huh? Bye. Now, I was sitting here trying to pull up that song in the background as we exited. Sweet oh. Caroline. <laughs> Guess what, uh, Brad? My that's not working. So we haven't <laughs> switched yet. So many people had so many comments. We need to figure it out. So, but yes, yeah. see you all next week, next Tuesday at nine. 
And if there's yep. anything you want to discuss, leave that in the comments or message us as well. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, everyone, for jumping on. We really appreciate it. Love you so much. Yeah. Yay, Love Brad. You. Go to sleep now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.